Hello everybody, this is Havoc and welcome to Prehistoric Kingdom. This is a series that I am incredibly excited to start. Uh, I have had pre, uh, Prehistoric Kingdom access for I believe a little over a year now. Blue Meridian and Cretivo gave me alpha access to make content over, to give feedback on, things of that nature. And I will admit I haven't done an entirely great amount of content centered around it because at the time it's just not what the channel was about but with this new direction and this new focus that i want to try i thought that a prehistoric kingdom series would be very beneficial both to people who are interested in the game and just for myself and having a fun time creating things so that's what we are going to start but first and foremost big huge shout out to blue meridian and Cretivo for this actual early access uh, pre-release access uh, the ability to be able to make content before a game officially releases is great. And I think you will be pleasantly surprised by everything that we can do even in this early access game. But another big shout out to Party Elite. Party Elite is a good friend of mine and his Planet Zoo series is actually what really inspired me to start this series for Prehistoric Kingdom. So I 100% recommend that you head over to Party Elite's channel and that you will uh, give it a little follow. You'll be able to check out his Planet Zoo content and enjoy a Planet Zoo version of what we've got going on over here. So you'll notice a few things here before we get started. We only have two options uh, for, for us pre-release, and that is in Spain, which is Scrubland, and the United Kingdom, which is a temperate zone. We are going to go with Spain. I like the backdrop better, has a little more vegetation. I'm going to explain what we're doing with this uh, in terms of landscaping in just a tiny bit. But I wanna set up what our goal is. So there is sandbox mode, there is a challenge mode, which is kind of your classic, and there is uh, a scenario mode, which will come with the release. We are going to do a sandbox mode. Now, sandbox mode doesn't mean that I get to do anything and everything that I want to because I am limiting myself. Sandbox mode simply allows me to pause time so I can create things and not have to go through the day night cycle. That's one of the things that I don't enjoy right off the bat, but it's something we have to deal with. So in sandbox mode, I can control that, which will then allow me to not have to worry about those night cycles, at least not initially. But you'll see here, I'm starting out with $5 million in cash. We have a thousand science points uh, to research new dinos. We could do unlimited. We're not going to, because I think that's boring. Uh, we aren't gonna do infinite power or structure durability or unlock all research. We're not doing any of that. In fact, we are keeping everything else though. Animal welfare, social and habitat, death, illness, aging, animal dung. We gotta worry about that. And I only have three dinosaurs, which I of course can, uh, you know, randomize quite a bit. Uh, let's go, there we go, that's fine. So we can unlock more in the future. But my, again, my goal is to build a functioning park that is economically and ecologically sound. So what we're gonna start out with right here is I am going to design my own map, essentially. I'm gonna do a lot of landscaping. There is a purpose and a reason behind it. So we're gonna go into a time lapse while I explain what's going on because I do think it's really cool, it's really important, and it kind of gives me almost a role-playing perspective on, on this part, which is kind of my goal here. Anyways, guys, before we start, if you do enjoy any part of this, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on bell notifications, because all those things help support YouTube, uh, help tell YouTube to support me and to push the video out there. Oh, and comments. I love comments, and I love reading comments. So be sure to do that as well. All right, I'm gonna see you in the zoo area. Let's get rocking. All right, and here we go. So my goal for this park is the idea of land conservation as well as animal welfare. We are going to take care of the land just as well as we can take care of the dinosaurs. This is sort of a, a kind of passion project for me uh, in, in, in a weird way. Basically, I love the idea of land conservation in general. And the premise behind that is that if we can conserve the land, we can keep uh, things like drought from happening. We can keep natural disasters from being so catastrophic. So <clears throat> essentially what we're going to do here is we are going to build 
a, a snaking river. And those aren't necessarily entirely natural, especially in the region that we are building in. But the idea here is that by creating this snaking sort of deal, we are able to direct and funnel any potential floodwaters. Uh, and you can see right here, we're gonna have our natural spring. But so by mitigating the effects of floods, we can therefore conserve the land a little better, prevent erosion, do all of those things. And so what you're gonna see me do is we're gonna snake into this big lake, but then around the corners, what we are actually end up going to do is we're gonna build these raised areas because it's the idea where if it does flood and spill over the banks, it's gonna do it on that curve. And so to prevent that from happening, we build the land up a little bit. You're going to see me plant a bunch of trees as well because that will kind of solidify the ground. Believe it or not, the more trees you have, those roots will actually increase the quality of the soil, prevent erosion in a great amount of ways. I've done a decent bit of research on this. Uh, so uh, I wanted to implement that into this park. Now, what you are going to see here uh, is we're gonna build our waterfall. Now, I will say right up front that I already built this waterfall. Uh, the game crashed on me right when I was almost done recording this time lapse the first time. And when I loaded back in, the waterfall was gone. This entire setup was gone and it was extremely frustrating. And so I'm really hoping that like a day one patch happens that really solidifies the stability of this because I have had a lot of issues with the stability of this early access update to get ready for pre-release. But essentially what we got here is we're gonna have a cool waterfall coming off of a spring-fed lake. It's a vastly spring-fed lake. And they have one of the last big updates was adding the waterfall mechanics uh, to this. Uh, I'm still getting used to how they function and how they work. Uh, I hope they add more effects in the future or even just like running water because we don't have running water per se. It's just these two uh, effects that you see down at the bottom. Now they do work and they do look great and you're gonna see my progression in trying to figure things out to make it look natural. Um, but I still think it looks really cool. And I, and it, one, the more that I mess with it, obviously the better I'm going to get at it. And so we are going to use these effects Throughout all of our exhibits, um, I would like most, if not all of our exhibits to have some sort of running water, depending on the, the region and the climate that they are going to be in. Uh, so you're gonna see me mess around with this, but keep in mind that one of the other goals, I guess you could say, is that I want to make exhibits that are real life to the exhibit, to, to the climate, the region, the vegetation, the foliage, the flora and fauna, of the time period in which those exhibits are going to reside in. Uh, so I'm gonna be doing a decent bit of research to do that. Uh, and so if the region that the T-Rex is in doesn't have waterfalls, then we're not gonna have waterfalls kind of a deal. I want to create climate appropriate areas. Uh, and we have so many animals that we're gonna be able to do with that I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And I wanna divvy up the park even by, uh, by era. Cause I think it'd be really cool to see what every dinosaur in the Jurassic period, the Cretaceous, uh, you know, that sort of deal. And so going back to the landscaping itself, right now I'm basically flattening everything out. Uh, when you do that, you can see that it's really, really rough and abrasive. Um, and yeah, the, the redo function is a little wonky as well. <laughs> uh, but I'm adding a deeper channel in the middle. I mean, this is kind of real life to rivers anyways. Uh, and then I'm gonna smooth that all out so it looks a lot more natural. And that allows the banks as well to look relatively natural. Uh, and the idea is again, we're gonna build our entire park around this system and try and keep it as much as we can. Uh, and I'm adding foliage and doing different types of uh, landscaping material here just to give it that natural feel. We're not gonna be here very often in our park. Uh, so it's not something you're gonna have to really worry about. And then lastly, I didn't like the placement of the entrance. So we're gonna move that entrance uh, and we're gonna get everything set up to get ready to rumble so we can get back into it. Uh, a couple of more edits, I'm just looking around, finalizing the structure, the layout, the smoothness. Um, I actually ended up adding a lot more waterfall effects right there as you just saw, just to kind of give it a really good look. Moved it one last time 
and we are going to officially start our entrance right about now. All right, everybody. Hold on. We're going to save it because I am beyond paranoid now. All right. I, I'm really digging what we've got going on. So as I mentioned, if uh, you're paying attention, <laughs> uh, the, the design of this sort of map is quite intentional. Uh, again, we're going for the kind of uh, land conservation kind of mentality here. Uh, oh, now it's saving. Is it going to crash on me? I hope, uh, I hope not, because that would be super duper depressing. Uh, while this is rather small, I may enlarge it. You know what? This is a group. Watch this. It wouldn't be too terribly hard to just bring things up a little bit. But actually, I feel like that almost works. We could get some things right here. That's actually not half bad. Um, all right, well, we got our wonderful waterfall set up. This is almost like a spring. You gotta kinda ignore the backdrop, right? So this is like a giant uh, uh, spring-fed lake, uh, essentially is what it is. And we are gonna peel over into here and that's gonna lead and flood our river, not flood our river, but supply our river. Now I do want this river to be a key piece in developing this space. So even if that means bringing this up quite a bit to where we really can utilize this. Now mind you, this is a massive, massive map. We have to, we have to think about that because a, an, a regular enclosure, uh, I mean, you could build an entire Planet Zoo park right here. But this is a prehistoric kingdom dinosaur park. And so I do think that actually plays a significant uh, part in this and how we approach everything. So for instance, we had to build that burn, I guess you call it a burn, a, a, the big giant hill over here. We had to build this and it's, it's kind of an effort to curb the flooding, right? But I totally see us maybe flattening it out Serving as like a landing platform, possibly. A little bit smoother, of course, you know, we round out the edges and whatnot. But basically like a landing platform to where, hey, we could overlook an entire exhibit over here, or even better yet. This is kind of just a cool plateau, look over the river, and then we have a cool land bridge or something to that effect. That comes over here and shows off a big giant exhibit over here. I mean, I can see this entire chunk being like a mixed species uh, zoo or uh, whatever you want to call. What is a dinosaur themed zoo? I don't know what that would be classified as. Uh, but I think one of the most important pieces that we're going to have to consider here is uh, is the entrance. Now, we can totally mess with all this. And this is a cute little thing. We have this as actually a prefab. Uh, we have a prefabricated statue uh, right here, which is really cute. <clears throat> I like it a whole bunch. But I think what we are going to do first is we are going to make sure that this stuff is level. Right? And then I found a cool little trick for getting rid of all of the grass. And that is simply, all you gotta do, it's very, very simple. All you gotta do is uh, repaint, I guess you could say, texturize as something that's other than grass. It can be rock, it can be sand, it can be anything of that type. Now, obviously this isn't gonna be perfect. Don't ever expect perfection out of me. I can only expect perfection myself. You guys aren't allowed to, but then we come over here uh, and we'll just, uh, we'll do rock for instance. And you'll see whenever we do rock, that it actually does disappear. There we go. Of course with intensity, you're gonna have to worry about other things. Uh, we obviously won't have the trees come through. If there is one thing, I will mention once again that this is an early access build. This is early access that it's going to be releasing in. And because of that, there are going to be things that just 
flat out don't make sense. Like for instance, why when you place a building, will it not just immediately remove the grass? Can't think of a scenario in which keeping the grass blades cutting through the buildings would be something that seems to be appealing. Uh, but there we go, there we go like that. Now we are going to drop our modern cobblestone because I, I like that the best. We're gonna drop that the maximum width that we can. We're gonna angle snap it. We're gonna do that as our first. No, I don't like it. Not centered. Uh, let's. Just round it out for now. Oh, wow. No. That intensity is way too high. There we go. All right. Right there. There we go. All right. Now, unfortunately for you guys, there isn't a whole lot of talking uh, in, in this section. Because what we're going to do first, got to save it because there, that save thing there is making me very nervous. So if I loaded it up, it'd be right there. Cool beans. What's really cool is in these assets, we have an Amontosaurus, a Mammoth, and a T-Rex. Now they're quite small when, you, uh, when we initially put them down, but they can get absolutely mahoosive. Now obviously we don't need something that big. Oh, well, it would be it would actually be really, really cool if we did. Uh, but considering that that's the statue and that's like the average height of a person, uh, I, I don't think it would be a good idea. We'll, we'll scale it down a bit to like right there. That's still a really, really freaking big statue. So we're going to do that and I'm going to get out of this real quick because the trees are annoying the crap out of me. Uh, shoo, 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 shoo. Shoo, shoo, shoo. So what we are going to have is we are going to build our, our uh, it would be a T-Rex slash Woolly Mammoth slash Edmontosaurus kind of entrance. There we go. We're going to, oh, you know what? Because I've recorded all of this, we are going into, I think it was 211, 202. Oh yeah, look at that. That is a nice, solid, bronze-looking statue, and I really love it. Let's go down to the mammoth. We're going to do the same thing with the mammoth. Look at the, the scale difference. This is the original size. And we can totally bring that up. I'm okay with that. There we go. Uh, and then, of course... We need to custom color 201202. Now what's interesting, that's a completely different color. That is not bronze whatsoever. We almost need a little bit more red, but not too much red. I think that might pass. It's, I'm, I'm not super duper pleased with it. That's actually pretty close. I say that's a pretty solid copper. Uh, we'll copy that. And then last but certainly not least is we have our Edmontosaurus. And we're gonna get that rolling. Uh, you know what, actually, I'm okay with that. Now, they have different poses as well. We're going to have that. I wonder what the different poses are. That's pretty cool. That's pretty basic. Uh, I don't know if that's, I would almost prefer that. And then we would need to move him just a smidgen where he's actually not hitting the T-Rex. There we go. Uh, and then we get into that. Nope. 201202 and see it's just a completely different color. It's a little frustrating when you're wanting to create things that look the same. 
That's not too shabby though. All right. Now, what's really cool is that much like, uh, we're gonna save it. I'm paranoid beyond I'll get out. Much like over here in our amazing waterfall. And we may even put some dinos up here if we want to. Uh, I'm gonna stylize this beginning thing. Now what's really cool, oh, they're not together. Merge groups, there we go. We're gonna knock this back just a little bit. And I'm gonna build another kind of grand entrance space. So you'll come in here, you'll be like, oh, this is adorable. That's a cute little T-Rex, you know, possibly a little life size, showing off that it's a T-Rex. We've got uh, apparently a floating platform. Come on, guys. Come on. Yeah, that's just a floating platform. Uh, we would need to, because that's actually gonna bug me. Let's go not so intense. There we go, that's fine. That's fine. But then they're gonna come in and they're gonna see this. And I want the people of this park to just be wowed by it. So we're gonna go into another time lapse for the remainder of this episode. Of course, I'll come in at the very end and all that kind of stuff. But for now, let's see what we can't come up with whenever we make this dealio right here. And we are back into time lapse number two. What I really love about Prehistoric Kingdom is the idea that every single object in the game basically is modular. Uh, we can stretch things in all different directions, make it look unnatural as all get out. We can scale things up. You see this right here. This is the perfect example of how scalable things are. We can make massive objects if we want to, or we can make them tiny, which I think is incredible. So basically right now, I'm gonna set up these dinosaurs to where they look naturally fitting uh, postures on the thing. And then for this entrance, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to surround it by water because I think it would look really, really cool. We're gonna surround it with a fence as well so no one falls in, you know how, uh, you know, how people are. And then we're going to just put loads and loads of vegetation around it. And when we get to that part, it's gonna be really, really cool because we're able to just really customize it. And we're gonna see that in a minute. But right now I'm gonna spend a uh, probably absurd amount of time trying to figure out my road, uh, my pathway for this. What's gonna end up happening is we're gonna build, uh, I guess you could call it like a half bowl shape. And you see that right there. I'm okay with it, I honestly am, because it's a cool little space. It's gonna give us a flat, uh, straight line so we can build kind of our first amenities. Uh, for the park, uh, for the park guests. And then again, we're using an actually exhibit fence, but it works the same way. I mean, there's nothing wrong with what we're doing. And then this is the part that's really, really cool. So in Prehistoric Kingdom, unlike other games where you have to place each individual piece of plant that you want, Prehistoric Kingdom allows you to select multiple plants and use that as a brush. So right now I have what, three, four different plants selected, which is really, really cool. It allows you to paint your landscapes so much faster than any other management game that I've seen. And it's so fantastic. Like I cannot dote enough on Prehistoric Kingdom's uh, system uh, because it's one of the things that's really going to set it apart from other games. The fact that I can go in and I can take a hundred different little things. Now it's not a hundred, but uh, and it's only limited to your certain climates. But the fact that I can go in and do that is great. Now what I'm doing right here is I'm actually raising the level of the ground underneath it because what I want to do is I want a couple of bushes to pop up. Now that's not gonna work, just so you know, it's not going to work. Uh, so instead I just use that as a single object and I'm then able to move it around how I want. Um, I also wasn't super happy with the water. It's just, it's grass underneath there, and that's a little weird. So what we're actually doing, this is actually substrate. So it's basically like what's on the bottom of forest floors. And I thought it gave it a nice muddy look. Um, and then I added the rock in just to give it a little more texture and life. Uh, now there's tons and tons of objects in this game. 
And I was gonna put some rocks in that I thought would be really, really cool. And then I realized that, hey, I'm actually kind of making a cool little volcano. And so I thought about keeping this volcano in the entrance, but I'm trying to keep a semi-serious uh, feel to the park, you know, having fun, of course. And I thought that having a volcano in the pond wasn't the best thing to do. Uh, but I still like, you know what, I'm going to go through with it because there may be a relevant climate. There may be a relevant scene where this will work. Uh, so I went ahead and decided to craft it. And you can see there using the fire and the smoke effects, I basically made my own preset. So whenever it, the time comes, I can actually use it. But it was just kind of a goofy thing that I wanted to leave in because it was, it was fun. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of empty space here. So I'm gonna use a couple of different biomes to then go in and fill this whole place with a bunch of shrubbery. Uh, and adding some life and some color to this. You'll see there with the splotches of, of red bushes. Again, I love Prehistoric Kingdom's ability to select multiple types of foliage. We can do this with trees and bushes. Again, it's limited to only one climate at a time, uh, which is unfortunate. But I could select all of these bushes, trees alike, and I could just make my own ridiculous crazy forest. And I love that. Uh, so you're going to see me finish up here. I'm not going to talk this whole time. I'm going to let you guys live in peace just for a little bit. But I'm going to fill this whole place up with shrubbery. And then you're going to see me in uh, about three minutes as we wrap up the episode. But I hope you guys enjoy this a whole lot. And if you do, let me know because I love the style of this sort of time lapse. And again, I love the brush painting style that uh, Prehistoric Kingdom has. I'm done chatting. I'm going to let you watch in peace. All right, everybody. Well, I think we are going to be done for today's episode. Uh, we haven't even made a sign yet. So I honestly don't even know what I'm going to name this park. It's not something that's been kind of a thought in my head. Been so focused on trying to create a really cool entrance and landscaping the entire place. 
that uh, we'll have to figure out exactly what we want to name our park. And if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, and then they'll, they'll probably be kind of the first time lapse. Now, just to forewarn you, pretty much every episode will have a time lapse uh, simply because there is so much to cover that uh, it wouldn't be uh, feasible any other way. Uh, and who knows, maybe I'll even stream this on Twitch. I'll stream the builds and then uh, condense it down for you guys to see here on YouTube. I don't know. Uh, but regardless, I am satisfied, albeit a bit disappointed. I'm satisfied in how it has turned out. I'm disappointed that the game itself is uh, a little bit in a very buggy state pre-release. You'll see I haven't even had to, had to come back and I'll have to come back and do the water there. Uh, so just so you get an idea, probably gonna hold off on the second episode until a uh, release, a you know, um, early access release patch that might address a lot of the bugs. I'm gonna hit up the devs because I don't want you know three or four crashes to happen and things to mess up again to where I lose motivation to play. Uh, so just keep that in mind and uh, hopefully you don't experience the same bugs, etc. that I have because that is extremely frustrating and I wouldn't want that on anyone, uh, much less people who have invested in the game itself. So guys, thank you again so very much for hanging out with me today. I'll see you in the next episode. And oh yeah, before we leave, of course, if you enjoyed any part of this, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, you know, uh, turn on that bell notification as well. And then any comments, again, are welcome. YouTube loves all four of those things, and it will push this video out if you do all of those. And I greatly, greatly appreciate it, but it's never, ever required. Thank you again so much for hanging out with me. This is Havoc, and I'll see you in the next episode. These are nature's greatest creations. This is your park. This is Prehistoric Kingdom.